Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Reformation. So the Reformation is an important part of history, but prior to the Reformation, Catholicism, Catholics, was the primary form of Christianity. And in the European Middle Ages, uh, the Catholic Church and the Church was very important and it uh, was dominating its civilization. And it's, it's hard to imagine that it, the church actually had so much power because it's not necessarily that way anymore today. But the, the church, when you think about it, they were in charge of your eternity, your souls. And in the church, you have, of course, the priest, which is equated to like the pastor, like what we have. And the priest played a very important role in the lives of the people of the church because um, when you're born and you're hopefully baptized, the priest was there for that. And then the priest would marry you. And throughout your life, the priest would hear about all of your confessions. And then when you were nearing death, the priest would provide your last rites. So the priest was walking every step away with your life. And the church also um, was important, not just the priests, but the church at the time provided all of the social services. So they uh, handed out alms to the poor, they ran the orphanages, um, and they provided education because there wasn't very much education um, outside of that. And so most Europeans in their life uh, based their lives around the church. And surprisingly, the people in the church would meet exactly one person in their entire life who could actually read the Bible because the Bible was only written in one language and that was Latin and the people were poorly educated and not all of them read nor understood Latin. And so the one person that read the Bible was the priest. The church had nearly one third of all of the land throughout Europe, which helped uh, make it a very powerful economic and political force on the European continent. And the Pope, so the head of the church, this head guy, he claimed authority over all of the kings in Europe and as a successor to the Roman Empire. So the church was this very powerful institution and a lot of weight was placed upon it. But with great power comes great responsibility. And the church did not uh, utilize fairness or its responsibility, which along came this guy named Martin Luther, and he noticed that some things were off about the Catholic Church. And one of those things was the fact that um, the priests were the only ones who could read and understand the Bible. So when they, they preached things, they couldn't necessarily check if it was right or wrong. They were just listening like, yep, this is what it says. That's what the priest says. That's what God tells me to do. And one of the biggest things that Martin Luther took issue was this thing called indulgences. And indulgences was basically paying for your sins. So if you did something wrong and then you could pay off your sins or the sins of someone who has already died, then they could be free and clear and get to heaven. It seems like a pretty messed up concept, but because the church was getting all this money, because we as humans are sinful creatures, um, the church had all this money and power, but Martin Luther thought that that was a little unusual and um, started to explore some things and then he started rocking the boat and along came the Reformation. So let's check that out. In 1483, the Pope seen here was the indisputable head of the Catholic Church. He was considered the voice of God on earth, the only human being with a direct relationship to Jesus. And into this church came Martin Luther, the man for whom the Lutheran Church is named. And he had some, well, serious issues with the way the Catholic Church was being run. Among his concerns was the practice of selling indulgences, a system by which Catholics who have sinned could then buy their way to redemption through a sizable donation to the church. Martin Luther couldn't bring himself to just stand by and watch the church stray so far from scripture. So he wrote a document called the 95 Theses that encouraged the church to move away from its focus on wealth and power and return to a focus on the grace of God. 
These were not popular opinions among his fellow Catholics, and ultimately, he was kicked out of the church. <laughs> Nevertheless, translations of his writings spread across Europe, lending his voice to what became known as the Reformation. Students came from all over to hear Martin speak. While Luther was gratified by the response to his writing, he had no desire or intention to start a new church of his own and was completely opposed to the idea that any group of people should call themselves Lutherans. Martin called for a church that was always reforming itself in order to keep its focus on scripture and God rather than on a religious figurehead like the Pope, which can disrupt human connection to the divine. So one might wonder why it is that today we proudly call ourselves Lutherans and not simply Christians, as Martin Luther instructed. Have we just replaced the Pope with Martin? <laughs> well, two things are certain. We are Lutherans, and that fact would make Luther very, very unhappy.